Hi, welcome to this new video. I'm Sergio, a computer vision consultant, developer and course instructor, and I help companies, freelancers and students to easily and efficiently build computer vision projects. We'll see now convolutional neural network with Keras, especially we're going to see uh, how to build, how to make the layer, convolutional layer, what we use it for, and to understand like what we get from it. It is going to be very simple, even if you're a beginner, so don't worry. You need just to be sure that you watch the previous video of this series and then let's go. We use the convolution operation in computer vision usually to extract information uh, from the image or to manipulate the image. An example of information that we can extract uh, with these can be features from the image, uh, whether it's an edge, whether it's a vertical edge horizontal edge or different type of edges, or we can manipulate the image, for example, blurring the image. So these are very common uh, basic operation that we do in computer vision with the convolutions. In the specific case of convolutional neural networks, it gets more complex because we will use this to extract features from an image and we will understand slowly what are these features and so on. The first thing that we have to do is to import Keras. Of course, I'm, I take it for granted that you already watched the previous videos because it will be easier to follow this one, previous video of this series, Computer Vision with Keras. Let's import Keras. We go right away to create a model. We create a model this way, model equals keras.sequential. So we're going to create a sequential model. The first thing that we do usually in convolutional neural networks is the convolution operation. So the first layer that takes the images will be a convolutional layer. And it will be this way, model.add. Now we want to add a layer. So first we need also to import the layers from Keras, from Keras import layers model.add layers dot con 2d we have different sizes of the convolutional neural network we have one dimension two dimension and three dimensions we will understand what is a two-dimensional convolutional layer very soon now just stick with this and we will see everything step by step first thing we're going to create a con 2d layer now this is going to ask some information that we need to put because the layer has some settings that we need to give first of all we need to say how big is the image that we're giving to the first layer because in the previous video i, I show you how to create a lay uh, a model by first adding an input layer so it was model.add uh, model.add layers.input so this takes the image and then we give the image to the other layer and so on we we can even skip this one because we can add right away we can say this convolutional layer, uh, layer is taking an input of the specific size and the input is the image because we need to give the image to this layer so we define first of all input shape equals the input shape is going to be the size of the image that we are going to use now to make things simple let's just load also an image so that it will, that it will make more sense i have an image which is dog.jpg if you want to use this image and if you want to use the same files i'm using you can just download them from the blog below so i'm going to put a link where you will see a blog post with everything written that we are seeing today including source code plus also the files so check the link below so you can download this and let me go back to this one so let's now load this image EMG so we load the image EMG equals cv 2im read we are going to load dog.jpg. Of course, we need to import OpenCV. 
So we import CV2. Now to make sure that everything is working correctly, I'm going to display the image. CV2.imshow.img. So the name of the window, what do we want to display? We want to display the EMG that we just saw. So CV2.imshow.img. Now I want to keep the image on hold to display the image. So I'm going to put a wait key event CV2.wait key zero. Now I'm going to comment this one. I'm just doing this to make sure that we're loading the image correctly. So I recommend always to run the code so that if there is any error, you will spot it right away. We are loading the image correctly. That's fine. Now we want to know the size of this image. The size of this image will be height, width, and then channels equals emg dot shape so this way we're going to get the size of the image i want to simplify this uh, to at least now that we are at the beginning let's use grayscale image not color image because the color image has three channels and makes things more complex complex later for the conclusion layer so let's now no matter if you have a color image, so the dog that I have, this is with color, but I'm going to load the image with grayscale format. So cv2.im read underscore gray scale. Grayscale, let me make sure that we are loading the image correctly. So of course the shape changes because it has only one channel, so it will be height and width. Of course, Normally, when we use commercial neural network, we will use a color image, load the image with the color. Now, let's start with small things, simple things. Later, we can increase, uh, improve this and increase the difficulty of the project. We start with this image. We have the height and the width of this image. And we are going to use height and width right here. Height and width of the image right here. We can also even better resize the image because that's a common operation that we do with convolutional neural networks. It doesn't matter what's the size of the image, it's, it's usually shrinked to a small image and then it's processed. Why a small image? Because a small image has less pixels and it's easier to process. So it does. if you have a full HD, let's say 4K image or a small image and there is just one dog, even from the small image, you can understand that there is a dog. You don't need to have so many pixels. So let's now resize this emg equals cv2.resize. We want to resize emg. Let's use a shape of 224 by 224, which is a common size used for classification neural networks so let's stick with 2024 by 2024 let's now display everything so i'm running this one and now we see that everything is running smoothly no error so we can continue with the rest we have kera sequential we are we have the convolutional layer it's not all yet for the convolutional layer we need two essential parameters inside the convolutional layer the first is let me put it here right here we have the filters let's say equal 64 now and then we have also the kernel size and let's say three by three now before explaining what they are we are going to extract uh, what we get from this layer so that we will see visually what this information right here is so in order to extract the information from this layer we need to access the weights that are created each time we add a layer so if we for, for example check the summary model dot summary and we run this uh, we get 
parameters for each layer these are values that we can access so now of course this is the description of our model uh, we have the convolutional layer is the first layer we have only that one so there is uh, no chance that we make mistake on the layers the output shape of this layer after it has been processed and the parameters let's now access the parameters uh, uh, now i'm going not to display the image anymore so i'm going to comment the one of the image because we don't need that right now and let's go and access access layer parameter how do we do this so we can access the filters and the bias is now we need only the filter so let's put filters and then underscore equals to model dot layers this works as we access in python the arrays so if we want to access the first layer we put index zero if we want to access the second layer layer we put index one and so on so if we have a lot of layers we can just put a loop and access each of them we have only one so let's say from model layers we access the first one so with index zero which is exactly this one so if we add another layer after this one we will put index one and so on index zero and then dot get weights these weights right here are the filters generated from this uh, from this layer to understand what is a filter and what is the kernel size we are going to loop through them so let's do this operation let's uh, i mean let's now display only one filter f so this is filter equals we need to access filters uh, let's first show the shape of filter so it's easier also to understand print filters we print filter dot filters dot shape first and let's now run this one is three three one sixty four this is the shape of filters in more simple words there are 64 images of size 3 by 3 now it will start slowly come to uh, understand what is filters and kernel size kernel size is the size of the images that will be used as features and we will see also we, we will display them and filters will be the number of these filters generated as simple as that so if we want to access now only let's say we have 64 filters let's now display the first one so from filters so we saw the shape was 64 6 uh, 3 3 1 64 so we want to access all the entire image and the first filter so this is a way to access the information so if we if we if we have 64 images we have we uh, height width one channel of the image and then we have 64 images we access with the index zero the first image so if you're not familiar with the um, multiple arrays probably it will not make sense now this operation to so you probably it will be hard to follow this specific part but don't worry now we will do this just once only to access the image and later further we can go more in depth also in this in other videos so filters what i'm going to do right now i'm going to display this one cv2 no first i'm going to print this print f and now let me run this one uh, what we see right now when i show this is a multi uh an array multi-layer array where we have three values three values and three values so we have three columns and three row this could be represented just as an image of three by three uh, pixels so if we show this cv2 
cv2.im show filter then f let's run this cv2.wait key to keep the image open and then we can run this oh, we have right here our image it's so small of course that we see pretty much nothing it's just three pixels by three pixels so it's pretty much pointless to display the image this way so let's now increase the size of the image so i'm going to resize the filter so that it will make sense to see the filter f equals and cv2 dot resize i want to resize f and let's say i'm thinking about this uh, let's say 250 by 250 pixels then interpolation equals cv2 dot inter underscore nearest I'm just resizing the image and in order to keep the pixels uh, without any blurring effect that's why I'm putting this interpolation right here don't focus on this we we don't care to get interest about uh, OpenCV we just want to see the image bigger so that's the entire point of this line to to make this of bigger size and I achieve my result and we see this it seems completely black but it's not uh, if we if we check carefully there are nine squares so we have nine pixels each of them is slightly different to display correctly this one we should normalize the values uh, because now we have uh, i'm not sure if I'm, I'm printing them so let me print again them print f in OpenCV, to display an image, either we go from 0 to 255, where 0 is completely black, 255 is completely white, or we can go from 0 to 1, where 0 will be black and 1 will be white, and of course, in the middle, we will have different sh uh, shades of gray. so if it's 0 0.4, will be closer to black, if it's 0 0.7, will be almost white, but around gray, and so on. Here, the values generated are random. So if it's zero or minus zero, it will be black no matter what. So we need to normalize them. We pick the highest one. So if we have a value of 10, we we'll say it would be the highest. And we can check also which is the highest one and the lowest one and we normalize them. So we put all the values in a range from zero to one. So if we now check F filters minimum, f mean and f max equals filters dot mean and then filters dot max uh, filters dot max let's print f mean and then f max and let's see what we get so we have the minimum is minus point uh, 0 0.10 something the maximum is 0 0.10 something so this minimum should be 0 and the maximum should be 1 and of course all the values that are in the middle need to change accordingly so to do this we are going to filters filters we are going to remove the minimum my divided f max minus f mean so this way we're going to have them normalized and to prove you this i can run the image and now we we should see some different difference already in the image i, I will also print the f print f but already if we check the image now this image will start making slowly more sense Oh, this is just one filter but we have 64 filters because i choose the the number 64 so let's now access more filters so instead of using accessing only the first filter let's say for i in range let's say that we want to display 10 filters in range of 10 and I'm going to put everything inside this loop display uh, filters right here so each time we access different filter 
now we were accessing only filter zero and say now we are in a loop so each on each loop we access a new filter so it would be first zero one and so on so we display up now to 10 different filters and we can display them one by one so they will keep in a loop once i close i'm thinking if display all let's display 10 all together string string of i so i'm going to load and show the image of 10 different filters so let's now run this one and now i have uh, different filters of course now i have them in different windows i'm slowly bringing them three so if you run this you will see because now i have two screens so all of them are open in my second screen so that's why you don't see them let's just show this these ones right here so each of so when you choose the number of the filters are the number of the of this that we are going to create so this is the number of the filters and each filter is defined the size of each filter is defined by the kernel size we set three by three so we have one two three pixels with three pixels of height and now you also understand why this is convolutional in two dimensions so if it was one dimension we will have only just one dimension now it's 2d convolution so that's why we have a kernel with two dimensions also so if we want to change the size of this we will change the kernel size let's say if we put seven and seven and we run this one uh, you can see now that the images are more complex so we have instead of three pixels in each of them uh, we have seven pixels so seven and se seven on the width and seven for the height and so on this is now the convolutional layer now, now very important why do we so what what is this representing this is going to extract the features from an image and it's going to create a feature map so in very simple words let's say in, in an intuitive way, way we could say that the kernel size represents the complexity of the feature so a bigger kernel uh, of course this is a very generalized idea so don't take like specific the words but to give you understanding so bigger kernel more complexity while the number of filters will define the number of the features that you can get usually the kernel size is either three by three, five by five, seven by five, seven by seven. So it's always a square filters. Uh, it depends of uh, on the, the network. If it's, uh, if, if it's classification, if it's detection, but we will see that later when we will get more in depth into the model. I think that for now, it's quite a lot that you can grasp for this. You will understand better what we get from the filters from the convolutional layer when we get into the feature map and that's going to be very interesting so i recommend that you play around with this code and try different uh, different number of filters try to display also maybe more filters so instead of displaying all 10 just show more of them and so on uh, i want also to recommend that this is uh, like the theoretical aspect of computer vision and if you want to get more practical if you want to build real projects uh, either for uh, to become a developer to create some startup ideas and so on i recommend to check the free crash course that i have down below in the description called computer vision blueprint where in one hour you are going to get a lot of information about uh, how to detect and track any object even if you have no experience this is all for today. See you in the next video.